Hi everyone, Mrs. Riley here with your latest installment of First Chapter Friday. And if you're watching this video on its release date, this is the last First Chapter Friday for April. And so we're going to finish up the month with another novel and verse to celebrate National Poetry Month. This novel, novel and verse takes on a bit of a sad tone or really a lot of a sad tone. It is called Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This story centers around two young girls, Camino and Yahara, who live in different countries. Camino lives in the Dominican Republic and Yahara lives in New York City. Their lives intersect when a plane crash takes the life of their father. What makes the dramatics a bit heavier is that they then learn after this plane crash that they share the same father. They did not know the other person existed, nor did they know that their father had another child. Not only are they left with grief, but they're also left with a lot of unanswered questions. So I wanted to share with you a few verses from the novel and verse Clap When You Land. And these verses are going to be from Camino's point of view, who lives in the Dominican Republic. It begins before she learns about the plane crash. The day. I am beginning to learn that life-altering news is often like a premature birth, ill-timed, catching someone unaware, emotionally unprepared, and often where they shouldn't be. I am missing a math test. Even though Poppy will get a taxi upon arriving, I skipped my last two periods so I could wait at the airport. I'll make up the exam tomorrow, I convince myself. Poppy's homecoming, for me, is a national holiday, and I don't rightly care that he's going to be livid. He reminds me once a week he pays too much money for my fancy schooling for me to miss or fail classes, but he shouldn't fuss since I'm always on honor roll. I also know Poppy will be secretly elated. He loves to be loved, and his favorite girl waiting at the airport with a sign and a smile, what better homecoming? It's been nine months since he was last here, but as is tradition, he is on a flight the first weekend in June, and it feels like Tia and I have been cooking for days. Seasoning and stewing goat, stirring a big pot of sanchoco, all of Poppy's favorites on the dinner table tonight. This is what I think as I beg Don Mateo for a bola to the airport. He works in the town right near the airfields, so I know he's grumbling only because, like his rooster, he's ornery and routinized down to every loud crow. He even grumbles when I kiss his cheek thanks, although I see him drive off with a smile. I wait in the terminal, tugging the hem of my uniform skirt, knowing Poppy will be red-faced and sputtering at how short it is. I search the monitor, but his flight number is blank. A big crowd of people circle around a giant TV screen. Tia has a theory that when bad news is coming, the saints will try to warn you, will raise the hair on the back of your neck, will slip icicles down your spine, will tell you, brace, brace, brace yourself, muchacha. She says, perhaps if you hold still enough, pray hard enough, the saints will change fate in your favor. Don Mateo's AC was broken. The hot air left me sweaty, pulling on my shirt to ventilate myself. Without warning, a stillness. A cold chill saunters through a doorway in my body. A tremble begins in my hands. My feet do not move. An airline employee and two security guards approach the crowd, like gutter cats used to being kicked. And as soon as the employee utters the word accident, the linoleum opens, a gnashing jaw, a bottomless belly. I am swallowed by this shark tooth truth. Papi was not here in Sosua the day I was born. Instead, Mama held her sister Tia Solana's hand when she had a dando a luz. I've always loved that phrase for birthing, birthing, danda a luz, giving to light. I was my mother's gift to the sun of her life. She revolved around my father, the classic distant satellite that came close enough to eclipse her once a year. But that year, the one I was born, he was busy in New York City, wired us money and a name in his stead, told mama to call me Camino. 16 years ago, the day I was born was light filled. Tia had told me so. It is the only birthday Poppy ever missed, a bright July day, but it seems this year he'll miss it too, because the people at the airport are wailing, crying, hands cast up. It fell, they say, it fell. They say the plane fell right out of the sky. It's always been safer to listen to Poppy's affection than it is to bear his excuses. Easier to shine in his being here than bring up the shadow of his absence. 
Every year for my birthday, he asks me what I want. Since the year my mother died, I've always answered to live with you in the States. I've heard him tell of New York so often you'd think I was born to that skyline. Sometimes it feels like I have memories of his billiards, Tio's Comando, Yankee Stadium, as if they are our places I grew up at, and not just the tall tales he's been sharing since I was a chamaquita on his knee. In the fall, I start senior year at the international school. My plan has always been to apply and to attend Columbia University. I told Papi last year this dream of pre-med at this prestigious university in the heart of the city that he calls home. And he laughed. He said I could be a doctor here. He said it'd be better for me to visit Columbia the country than for him to spend money at another fancy school. I did not laugh with him. He must have realized his laugh was like one of those paper shredders making a sad confetti of my hopes. He did not apologize. It is a mistake, I know. A plane did not crash. My father's plane did not fall. And if, if a plane did fall, of course my father could not have been on it. He would have known that metal husk was ill-fated. Tia's saints would have warned him. It would be like in the movies where the taxi makes a wrong turn or mysteriously the alarm does not go off and Papi would be scrambling to get to the airport only to learn he had been saved. Saved. This is what I think the whole long walk home. For four miles, I scan the road and ignore cat calls. I know Don Mateo would come back to get me if I called, but I feel frozen from the inside out. The only things working are my feet moving forward and my mind out racing my feet. I create scenario after scenario, everyone else on that flight, but save my father in my imagination. I ignore the news alerts coming through on my phone. I do not check social media. Once I get to my Cajeon, I smile at the neighbors and blow kisses at Viralada. It isn't true, you see. My father was not on that plane. I refuse. So those were the first few verses from Camino's point of view of Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. If you would like to check out a copy of this book, visit the library Google Classroom.